and uh, all the dear participants on behalf of the department of civil engineering sri venkateshwara college of engineering i welcome you all to this webinar on uh, underground metro rail structures uh, i now request our beloved head of the department to welcome the gathering uh, thank you rubis it's audible yes ma'am okay so a uh, pleasant good evening to you all uh, so on behalf of the department uh, good evening sir so on behalf of uh, department of civil engineering sri venkateshwara college of engineering i'm very happy to welcome you all for this uh, uh, webinar on underground metro rail structures uh, both tunnels and stations so, so uh, for this webinar uh, uh, lecture we have with us today uh, em eminent speaker uh, mr mo ramanathan uh, director structures uh, transit and railways uh, transportation acom chennai so uh, when uh, uh, when talking about mr mu ramanathan actually he is a um, uh, he is a man with a rich experience in the field of design and construction and uh, one more thing uh, brings more happiness to me uh, is that uh, he is an alumni of uh, jagraj college of engineering uh, so which is the institution which i studied both uh, my undergraduate and postgraduate uh, uh, degrees so i am very much happy on that too and uh, i request uh, mr ramu ramanathan in this occasion uh, to share his experience and also to throw more light to our civil engineering students uh, on uh, um, the industry expectations from a civil engineering graduate and also how uh, civil engineering students should cope up uh, should equip himself uh, in order to face the challenges uh, uh, in the uh, civil construction industry so i don't want to waste much uh, my time and also much uh, much time because we would like to hear more from mr mu ramanathan uh, who is having more than 3 uh, decades of experience uh, in the field of design and construction so with these few words um, on behalf of everyone present here I'd like to um, extend a cordial welcome to mr mu ramanathan who has accepted our invitation to deliver a lecture on underground metro rail structures both tunnels and stations and also i welcome all the participants who are present here uh, i welcome all the faculty members also uh, who have come here to attend this webinar so once again i welcome you one and all uh, now i request mr ruby to take over the session thank you ma'am so i would like to give a brief uh, intro about our guest speaker so mr m ramanathan is a director of aecom aecom is an engineering consultancy firm with a global network of experts Uh, Mr Ramanathan is trained in Hong Kong for over two decades and presently working as a project manager for the design consultancy of the Chennai Metro Rail Space 2 Works. So he is a post graduate in a uh, in structural engineering and member of the prestigious institution of structural engineers UK and institution of civil engineers UK. Uh, he is a registered professional engineer of Hong Kong and a chartered engineer of UK. He has had experience in design, construction supervision, and contract administration associated with metro rail and large scale building works. Uh, he has also been extensively involved in the structural design of Hong Kong metro rail stations, uh, which is considered considered as the best metro in the world. And then, between 2009 and 2014, he has led the tender design of the Chennai metro rail stations and depot, and also overseen its detailed design. including both the underground and under uh, and elevated stations subsequently he has also worked as a project manager for, uh, of the hong kong airport's underground depot for automatic people mover uh, the riyadh metro rail project in saudi arabia and the mumbai coastal road project uh, he has prepared several technical reports bid proposals and contract documents he has completed a, a study on design rework commissioned by the city university of hong kong he has also published several technical papers and to add on to that he has also written occasional articles in uh, tamil newspapers and is very uh, active and uh, during the short uh, interaction during the short time i have found him to be very modest and so much interested in uh, bridging the gap between the curriculum and the practical field work which is the need of the art so thank you for accepting the invitation and welcome you once again sir i request you to take over the session so thank you very much so thank you for a very generous 
introduction and i am very happy to be one amongst you i know some of the brightest civil engineering minds are listening to this talk is my voice audible yes sir clear yeah yeah i find some uh, i mean here some uh, echo uh, i mean the listeners may mute their mic uh, till the time the talk is over unless uh, they want to intervene in between so i, I believe that will <coughs> improve the quality uh, of the talk <sighs> Uh, so is it okay, right? Currently, you can hear me. Yes, sir. Yeah. So today um, um, we will walk through this uh, bore tunnels and um, underground stations with respect to metro rail. Um, but apart from that, um, as your head sub head of the department was pointing out, uh, I would also like to use the opportunity um, to talk few words about. Uh, the industry and the institutions, uh, the bridge or the gap between the two uh, in India and how to uh, make good that. And um, I think this talk can throw some light on that. Um, so what I'm planning to do today, the broadly I have divided into three headings. Uh, one is about the general metro rail industry and specifically about Chennai. And that will be the first part. The second part is about the underground stations. And the third part will be the bore tunnel. So the photo what you're seeing is a underground station work that is in progress. It is in the middle of a city. So part of the road is operable. The traffic is running. And in the another part of the road, the deep excavation has taken place. And what all you see in brown color are steel struts to keep the excavation in place. You, are, you can see the concrete trucks moving around, the pentonite tanks, and uh, gantry girders. All these things are there. So busy construction work in the middle of a city. Still the traffic is going on. That is the challenge of building a metro. Uh, so out of this, more than technical, I mean, the second and third part will be uh, some design and construction aspects of the underground stations and tunneling. But the first part is more of an introduction to about the metro rail industry and um, the Chennai Metro Rail, uh, which, is, which will not be very technical, but as uh, civil engineers, we will be dealing more with uh, infrastructure projects and with government. So a basic uh, outlook of uh, the history of the country, history of the construction, the geographies, uh, social engineering, all are required for you to become a full-fledged engineer, uh, for which I think this might be useful. So the first part is uh, uh, about Metro Rail in general and Chennai in particular. Um, so before we get into this, um, just to brush your memory, some of the things you might know, uh, some might be news to you. So the photo is a four-car Chennai Metro Rail running on an elevated viaduct. Uh, it's a common scene. Uh, so you, all of you are studying in the city, so you might have come across or traveled very well in the Chennai Metro. So the Metro Rail, by name, it is clear. It is running only in the metro cities. And uh, in Hong Kong, it is called Mass Transit Railway. So it transports people in mass. And uh, what is the difference between the intercity or the long route railway and uh, metro rail? The stations are very close. At every one kilometer on an average, there will be a station. So there's a station at Marshman Pet, then at Manadi, then at High Court, then at Chennai Central, then at Nightmore, all average one kilometer, one kilometer, one kilometer. The idea is anybody in the middle of the city should walk not more than 500 meters to board a metro train. And uh, another one is a standard gauge. So on the normal railway um, in olden days was running on a meter gauge or a narrow gauge. The meter gauge means the width between the tracks is one meter. And uh, later, uh, the Indian railways uh, found that that is not very efficient. So they broadened the uh, gauge uh, to 1.676 meters, which is called broad gauge. 
which is uh, mostly in operation now. But the broad gauge is not suitable for Metro Rail because Metro Rail is running in the middle of the city, well-developed city. There will be a lot of curves. And for maneuvering these curves, uh, the gauge has to be smaller. So that is in the order of 1.475 meters. That is called standard gauge. All over the world, uh, Metro Rails are running in the standard gauge. And what is called this rolling stock is the um, train car itself. That is the technical term being used. So you might have heard stocks and shares. Stock is a something, um, a sort of a property. And uh, rolling stock is uh, is not an immovable property. It is a movable property moving around, rolling around. So it is called rolling stock. And signaling and telecommunications is also very different. Uh, it's an electronic interlocking and uh, continuous automobile traffic control. So it's signaling and telecommunication of uh, Metro Rail is much different to the normal railways. Headway means the time gap between uh, the two successive train in a particular station. In Chennai Metro, now in the peak hours, the headway is five minutes, and in non-peak hours, it will go up 14 minutes. But in places like Hong Kong, uh, in the peak hours, it is less than two minutes. Uh, to be precise, it is 110 seconds. So, uh, I mean, within two minutes, two minutes, every train will be coming. So, but Chennai Metro is also designed to take that type of uh, headway. Uh, currently, uh, because it is only built in a part of the city, that much headway is not required and not being used. Uh, the TVS means tunnel ventilation system, VAZ means ventilation and air conditioning. Uh, these are all about mechanical engineering, Not we are not going to talk about that. But when we go below ground to a tunnel, so this ventilation, air conditioning, uh, firefighting, all these become very important. Uh, so that is much different to normal railways and the loading uh, is also different, the normal uh, rail loading and I think you may be studying railways in your studies. So the axle load of a normal rail is a bit different to Metro Rail. Metro Rail is around 17 tons. And uh, merits of the Metro Rail, uh, many of you might have already experienced, it is it consumes very less energy, normally one-fifth of what is uh, consumed by uh, road transport. And it is more reliable, very punctual. Uh, when I migrated, I migrated to Hong Kong in the year 1995, I worked in a place called Causeway Bay. A friend called from another place uh, called Central, and he told me that that is the first month of my working there. And he told me that you come to exit number E of Causeway Bay Station, I'll come there in 23 minutes. Uh, I was, it looked very funny to me. What is this 23 minutes? Why not he saying 30 minutes? Or 25 minutes. So what is happening is from his workplace, he's calculating how many minutes will take for him to walk to the central station, go down to the platform, catch a train within the two minutes headway, and then come to the Cosway station, climb the escalator, come to the uh, exit. All this is calculating and saying 23 minutes. So it, uh, later I understood not only that particular guy, in, it is a very common norm in that city for people to talk like that because people treat time as gold and Metro Rail is helping that. And noise level is lesser, fully air conditioned, that is one advantage, it is I mean, very comfort. See, in, you go to your workplace or to your college uh, in an air conditioned train, your comfort level will be very high and your output will be very high rather than traveling. In a, hello? Any problem? No problem, sir. Yeah. So it, it's the comfort level is increased, so your output will be more. So the capacity can be augmented. What does it, what do I mean is now the Chennai Metro Rail is currently four, but it is designed for six cars. It can go up. Uh, so phase two, which I'm going to talk later, is currently designed. I mean, it's also designed for six cars, but it will start with three cars. And reduces journey time. Uh, Washerman Pet to Chennai Central in the Metro Rail will take about 45 minutes, but in normal transport will take about 90 minutes to 120 minutes. So it's very faster, less carbon emission, and it carries seven times seven lanes of buses or 22 lanes of uh, private cars for a four car train. So these are all some of the merits of the Metro Rail. So why we should go for Metro Rail? There is a reason. And um, this is a map of India. Everyone know what. I am projecting this is uh, because you are all in engineers, so some of you uh, will be interested um, to uh, get into metro rail industry. So civil engineers um, 
play a very big role um, in building the uh, infrastructure. The civil engineers build the roads, they build railways, they build bridges, seaports, airports, houses, offices, hospitals, powerhouses, water supply, sewerage system, so many things. Um, so civil engineers make uh, the life of uh, the general public more comfortable and convenient. Um, so now, unfortunately, there's a time of a pandemic and um, the economists are warning that things are not going well. So all over the world, what governments will do in a period like this, they will pump more money into the infrastructure projects. And uh, India is now uh, capturing on the metro rail industry. So in the next few years, we can expect a lot of investment and jobs in the metro rail industry where civil engineers have a lot of opportunities. So that's why I wanted to deal with this slide a bit longer. Um, see, there are two types of cities uh, in India. They are called Tier 1 cities and Tier 2 cities. What is Tier 1 cities is Chennai, the population is in the order of 7 million or 70 lakhs. Uh, Bangalore and Hyderabad also in the same order. Uh, Kolkata and Mumbai is in the order of 1 crore and Delhi is much more. So these cities um, are called Tier 1 cities. So Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, which is written on the right side. These are all Tier 1 cities where all metro rails are running now. And uh, the cities below, below Hyderabad, is all called Tier, tier 2 cities, that is 2 million population more. So the government of India, uh, a few years back, uh, encouraged uh, the cities, the second tier cities to build metros and many cities have uh, grabbed that opportunity and currently among the types it was in the map what all you see in red color are operational metros. Uh, so apart from the tier one cities which we said, uh, Kochi metro is there, Jaipur metro, uh, Lucknow uh, and uh, Gurgaon. So these are all metros which are running and what all you see in the green color they are all in the planning stage. Um, so, Vishakapatnam in Andhra Pradesh, uh, and uh, you see a lot of green in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, where a lot of second tier cities have started uh, planning, started uh, building metros. So, the company which I work for, AECOM, uh, is consultant for many of these metros. And uh, in Gujarat, Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar, all these places also. They in construction or uh, it is under planning. Uh, so one candidate uh, in uh, Tamil Nadu is Coimbatore, where the Chennai Metro Rail uh, Limited has been tasked to prepare uh, the project report which is going on. So once that is approved by uh, state government and central government, that project will also take into shape. So what I simply want to say is uh, please take note of this and um, brace your capacities and um, your knowledge in this area. When I mean knowledge, it is not only the design or the structural design of uh, a metro. It is all, there are many areas uh, within uh, the civil engineering where you can contribute. It can be uh, construction supervision, it, or it can be contract management, or it can be planning, it can be structural engineering, it can be geotechnical engineering. There are so many areas. Whichever you think is uh, fit for you, you should uh, uh, brace yourself in that particular area and come, I mean, and get yourself ready. Uh, so I think this talk may be helpful for that. And this is an alignment map of uh, phase one of Chennai Metro. Uh, it starts from Washman Pet and uh, from Manadi High Court. The blue line is called Corridor 1. And uh, from High Court, it comes to, then it goes to uh, Anasalai, uh, previously called Mount Road. So from government estate, all this, uh, LIC, Gemini, Tenampet is all, up to Saidapet is Mount Road. And Little Mount is also Mount Road, but from here onwards, it is elevated. So it goes up to airport. So the red line starts from Chennai Central, goes to Edmore, and then go to Poonamalli High Road up to Thirumangalam. This is all underground. And from Coimbatore onwards, it is elevated. It is a, what is famously known as uh, 100 feet road. It reaches St. Thomas Mount. So out of this, so what seen in the thick color here is the underground. So 
So Washington Pet to Saida Pet is underground, and Chennai Central to Thirumangalam is underground. So the remaining part, uh, what you're seeing in blue color, is elevated. Uh, so there are also interchange stations. Uh, Chennai Central and Alanpur are the interchange stations among the metro. Hello, somebody. There is some noise. Can you mute your mic, please? And <clears throat> I'm not sure if a noise is not audible or any disturbance. Please uh, let me know so that I'll correct myself. Uh, it's clear, sir. I'm the side. I'm not uh, looking at anyone. So, uh, so this is the problem with this uh, online meetings. So, unless you tell that there is a problem, I will not know. Uh, so, I'll, I'm, I'll go ahead. But, so, there are you may start with many other places. This washerman right, Edmore, Gindi. St. Thomas Mount, these are the places where there is already a suburban railway station and this metro station has been built very close to the suburban railway station so that there can be an interchange. People traveling from one mode of transport can travel, tra change themselves to other. And uh, this is an important slide, uh, it's about the phase two, where phase one is also there. So this green line, this blue line is from, uh, this washman pet has been further extended to Trivatur here. So from Trivatur to airport is phase part of phase one. So this washman pet to Trivatur is undergoing. So washman pet to airport is in uh, operation. Similarly, St. Thomas Mount to Chennai Central is in operation. So these are the two corridor one and corridor two as they are called in operation. So what is under design are uh, going to be started, uh, I mean the work will start soon or corridor three, four, five. Corridor 3 starts from Madhavaram in uh, North Madras and it comes through Perambur, Ayanavaram and all that, Chetpet and then it comes to, into Central Madras, Thousand Lights, Rayapet, Mandavali, Greenway, Sarkar and then it gets into YMR. So at Taramani it gets into YMR and goes all the way to Sholinganallur and Sipkat in YMR. This is about Corridor 3. Corridor 4 starts from Beach, Lighthouse, uh, Foreshore Road, Kacheri Road, comes to Adyar, Nandanam, Kodambakam, up to Kodambakam it is underground, and then it goes to, takes an elevated path in Arkat Road, goes all the way to Punamali. This is elevated and this part will be underground. And the corridor, this is Corridor 4. Uh, those who are following the newspapers might have noticed that this elevated part uh, has already been tended out. Um, from um, Powerhouse to Punamalli. And uh, Corridor 5 is from uh, Madhavaram Mill Colony. Uh, again, it goes passes through uh, Kolathur on Annanagar, comes to Thirum Thirumangalam and comes down and uh, passes to Alandur and uh, Kovilambakam and all that. It joins at Sholingamalli. So all told, this is about 119 kilometers of work will be happening in Chennai, both underground and elevated. So out of which, so what is highlighted now is about 43 kilometers is underground. And the remaining blue is about 76 kilometer elevated. So totally 119 kilometers, it is currently estimated as 10 billion US dollars or close to 70,000 crores of rupees. So these works, even if we start in the by early next year, it will go for another seven or eight years. Uh, so there is a lot of scope for young engineers to work either with a consultant or with a contractor or with the government or with specialist uh, uh, manufacturers. So there are a lot of scope in this area. So please take care of what's happening, going to happen in Chennai right now. So we are not going to talk about the elevated stations today, but uh, for the completeness of the presentation, I thought it is uh, good to put one slide. This is how the stations which are going to con be constructed in YMR will look like. So this station is slightly high because the current uh, YMR is here and um, the highways department, the state highways department is planning to build a uh, elevated road. So that provision is allowed and the metro station will be coming here. There will be two platforms on either side and two trains, metro trains will be coming here. So this is a simple elegant roof on the top. 
so this is an existing uh, 3D uh, view of a little mount uh, station. So traffic or road below and uh, viaduct we call normally call the bridge uh, road bridges which are used for uh, rails just viaducts. So the viaducts and station on the top. So, but we, this is not a part of our discussion today. Uh, but the majority of the works that are going all over India, uh, mostly it is elevated because elevated or can be constructed faster. Uh, Cost-wise, it is cheaper. Uh, but uh, underground is more sustainable. If you take all the major metros in the world, whether it is London or Paris or New York, um, Hong Kong, Singapore, Moscow, Beijing, Shanghai, all these major cities, the metro, majority of the metro is underground because it is more sustainable, because it leaves the road traffic as it is and everything goes below, but it's expensive. Uh, so we'll talk about that, uh, something more on that later. So this is how a typical underground station looks like. This is a two level station. So what happens, uh, this is the road level. And from there, one has to come to the concourse level uh, where he has to buy a ticket and then get down to the platform board. There. This is a simple one. This is the cross section. And this is the longitudinal section where there will be staircases to connect the levels, escalators to connect the levels. One has to come from outside through an entrance to a concourse, buy a ticket, get down to the platform, board the train. So this is a 3D model. Uh, developed for one of the phase two underground stations uh, by us. Um, uh, for a, uh, This is relatively, the width is small, the length is small because we have optimized it. And what you see on either side is tunnel. Uh, the rectangular box is a station, underground station, and on either side tunnel. So they I mean, uh, there are two components in underground work. One is underground station built in a cut and cover method and uh, uh, tunnel, which is uh, constructed by bore tunneling method. If you take elevated, again, there are two parts. One is elevated station and then is wide ups. So there will be station every one kilometer average. And if it is elevated, that will be connected by wide ups. If it is underground, that is connected by bow tunnels. And uh, that is the end of the first part. Um, this is more of an introduction of what is happening in this country, what is happening all over the world in the metro rail industry, and what are the two types of uh, stations. So this is just a broad outlook uh, for you people, not much technical, as I said uh, at the beginning of the talk, but for you to get a full-fledged uh, uh, outlook of the scenario, I added this. I, I think that will be useful to you. Uh, so now we go to the second part, that is underground station. So some design and construction aspects we'll try to capture as much as possible with the given time. Uh, so what is in this picture, it is, this is the Chennai Central Station. And what you see on the top is the uh, entrance used for the Ramasamy Chowdhury, which is opposite to the Victoria Public Hall. Uh, okay, now um, we are going to construct something very deep. Uh, 20 meter or 30 meter deep. So how to do that? So simple thing is open cut excavation. So that is a normal way to do any excavation. So what what, to, what is open cut excavation? We just excavate. So to es to keep uh, the excavation safe, the excavated face will be sloping. So ideally it should be in the order of one is to one. If the soil is a bit strong, it can be lesser. Uh, but for the normal loose soil, it should be in the order of 1 is to 1. That means if you are excavating 3 meters, uh, I mean 3 meter deep excavation, you should have a space horizontally 3 meter. So if you are making an excavation of 5 meter, you should have a space of 5 meter. If that type of luxury is available, you can go for open excavation, which is not possible in a metro city. We are building a station in the middle of the road. On either side, we have buildings, so it is not possible to do open excavation. But if there's a space available all around, so you're building a big tank uh, in a greenfield uh, city or greenfield location, uh, you can go for open excavation. 
So this is where there are some space is available. So this is probably a building. As you can see, some piles are coming out. This might be a building site. So the open excavation is possible. They are doing it. If open excavation is not feasible, what to do? Then there is something called sheet piling. Sheet piling is driving this uh, steel sheets from the top in the beginning itself. Drive. That means percussive piling. It is called by hammer it downwards. That will support as a vertical support, and what you can see in the as a horizontally is called lateral support or struts. So this this will make the excavation stable. Uh, in Chennai, there are a lot of multi-story buildings are being built with two level, three level car parks. Each will be about 2.5 meter to 3 meter high. So 7.5 meter, 8 meter, 9 meter deep excavations. So the sheet pile could be useful. So what they do? They drive a sheet pile first and then excavate. That, that sheet pile will hold the earth, will hold the lateral pressure of the earth and the soil and the water beneath and behind. And to support it, you have a lateral support. So that you, that is okay for uh, excavations in the order of 7 8 meters. So this is another type of excavation. It's called I mean, another type of shoring system. Shoring is a term used for um, vertical support. So this sheet pile uh, or the second pile are called shoring system. And uh, lateral support is was given in horizontally to support that. So here the secret pile is used steel hedge piles in a concrete uh, pile, inside a concrete pile. So this is if something is more deeper or the soil is more looser, so they go for this type of secret pile. So this sheet pile or secret pile is not suitable for metro construction because uh, our excavation is much, much deeper. Uh, so what we're doing is what you're seeing in the uh, here on the side is called diaphragm wall. Uh, this diaphragm wall um, is something you construct first. Before excavation, you construct the diaphragm wall first. You make a trench, vertical trench, and pour concrete into it. So I don't know whether diaphragm wall design or anything is included in your uh, syllabus, but definitely I'm sure you might have studied about retaining wall. So the diaphragm wall acts simply on a principle of retaining wall. So if it's a normal columns or walls will take predominantly vertical loads. But retaining walls, in addition to vertical load, predominantly they take lateral loads. So here the diaphragm wall resists lateral loads. Lateral loads means what? Lateral load comes from soil and comes from water pressure. And surcharge. Surcharge is whatever load on the top of the road. So this transferred into lateral load. So this is designed to resist that lateral load and concrete is poured from the top. And what you're seeing um, are the steel struts, fabricated steel trusses acting as a struts, which are used as lateral supports. So these lateral struts are installed as you go down in the excavation. First, you have to construct the diaphragm wall or a retaining, simply retaining wall. The construction method is very similar to piling. Piling is bow piles, 1 meter, 1.5 to 2.5 meters, sorry. Uh, 1, 1 1.5, 2.5 5 meters deep, I mean diameter. So you pour concrete from top. So instead of piles, here for the entire wall, you pour concrete from the top. So how it is done, you see in the subsequent slides. So this is another view of uh, diaphragm wall. I think both the photos are taken from Chennai Metro Phase 1. Um, as you see, the diaphragm walls are constructed first and then the lateral supports are there and people are working here, they are going to build a slab here. This is the top slab of the station. And here you see people, are, uh, the excavation is going on. Um, so here you see a lot of things, this is called steel couplers. So these steel bars will be connected to these couplers. These couplers will be provided when the diaphragm wall uh, reinforcement cage is installed. So what we have to do pr primarily, uh, so a lot of you might be interested in geotechnical engineering. So the uh, metro rail industry, especially the underground metro, is a place where there is a lot of scope for geotechnical engineers because 
we deal more with earth and soil and like um, uh, superstructures which are constructed above ground we construct most of the things below ground so geotechnical engineering plays a very very crucial role and um, this is how the soil i mean the bore holes are done so we take soil samples rock samples and designate the soil uh, because we i talked about lateral pressure it varies according to the soil properties so this is very important and uh, i would like to spend few seconds on this slide this is a simple cartoon so what you are seeing here is a diaphragm wall constructed down um so that is as, as i said before just assume that wall is done somehow there are vertical trenches taken and concrete is poured from top without any uh, actual excavation taking place okay after that what happens you excavate to some level that is number one number two you are seeing something on horizontally two thick lines so that is it can be either a strut steel strut temporary strut which has to be removed or it can be a permanent concrete slab depending upon the design and the uh, other requirements so here the when you excavate like this the bending of the wall will be like this so then you are putting a strut once you put the strut and you excavate further down you see the bending is happening in a, some other fashion then you put another slab so in the previous sketch you remember the concourse slab this is at that level and then from the concourse so this is the ground level you excavate down further you go down now you can see the bending is happening in some other different fashion and you construct the another slab base slab so what is very important here is normally in any building structure whether it is a building or a bridge uh, or an airport or a seaport whatever you build above the ground uh, the final load or the ultimate load that is going to come will be the case that is critical so if you build construct a building slab beam column the final load ultimate load uh, i mean i use the word ultimate uh, not a service versus ultimate the final load um, this will be the uh, critical case you have to design for that but that is not the case in terms of underground structures especially this type of diaphragm walls so as you see the forces forces i mean shear forces and bending moments which will be different at different stages of construction so when you put the first strut the shear force and bending the critical shear force and bending moment will be different place different numbers and when you put the second strut it will be a different place different numbers and when you put the third one it will be different place different numbers all these have to be designed and for all this your structure has to be uh taken care, i mean all this your structure has to take care of all these forces so this is another simple structure simple figure this is the diaphragm wall this is the excavation you have taken uh, undertaken and um, so this is uh, your road or the permanent structure so this is the ground water level so what happens so there will be a substantial active earth pressure on this side so so you have to assess the properties of the soils based on which the soil pressure will vary so if it is a loose soil sandy soil clay soil rocky soil or rock so this pressure will be different so the soil investigation plays an important role and you have to assess the active earth pressure based on the earth soil parameters and this is the water pressure this depending on the water table this pressure will be there so these two together act on this diaphragm wall so in the initial stage before you put your uh, your uh, concourse slab or roof slab this is what is going to be predominantly uh, working on this uh, diaphragm wall so it has to be designed for that these are the passive pressure from the other side but this will be the one so uh, this is um, i think you you might have uh, uh, studied retaining walls um, the same design principles are used uh, but in a more um, sophisticated way and uh, uh, the or as i said the critical conditions keeps on varying and your your design should take care of that uh, so now we go to the construction part from the design this is a sketch i've taken from one of the chennai metro phase 1 uh, station what you see in the green color is a diaphragm wall constructed first this wall as i said was constructed even before any excavation is happening before uh, uh, i mean when any physical excavation is taking place you construct this green diaphragm walls uh, first uh, just by taking a trench and pouring concrete 
from the top. And this, as you see, these are all constructed in panels. So the, every panel will have a number. So each panel we have to construct one by one, one by one, one by one. You keep on building this. And one, uh, why people mostly go for diaphragm wall is diaphragm wall is designed firstly for temporary load, that is during excavation. Later it will double up as a permanent wall. That is the uh, very cost attractive thing about a diaphragm wall. So you, the earlier we talked about sheet pile or a second pile, they are purely temporary. So you construct you have the sheet pile and you construct something into that and then you have to retrieve the sheet pile. So that sheet pile you may reuse or you may throw it as a scrap, uh, but that is purely temporary. But this is too deep. You cannot go for something like that. So you go for a very concrete, I mean, concrete wall, which is used in the temporary case and later you develop it as a permanent uh, wall. So the construction of diaphragm wall is a very important thing and it's very time consuming and it is also expensive. Nearly 50-60% of a civil cost of an underground station is consumed uh, by the diaphragm walls. So some in the middle you see some blue columns, you forget about that for now. So what you have to understand now is uh, the uh, is the diaphragm wall. Uh, so the station length varies. Currently in phase one it is in an order of 130 meters, but in phase two we have reduced to 150, 160 meters. Uh, so for that length this will be built and there will be two bulbs on either side. Uh, this is just for uh, operation of tunnel boring machine. So the machine will be launched here and will bore and go to the next station. And similarly, it will be launched here, it will bore and go to the next station for that. And it has been designed like this so that this additional space can be permanently used also, it will not go waste. So this is the one where these two trains will be coming. So this I have taken from a catalog of a um, trench cutter of a diaphragm wall. So what they do in a diaphragm wall, as I said, it is a uh, trench. Your trench is taken so the road level from the road level or ground level. So concrete, uh, this is excavated through this uh, trench cutters and then concrete is poured. Before that, how it is, we have to retain this trench, right? For which bentonite solution is used. So bentonite is the sort of a clay which will expand when you add water. So this is a bentonite tank and it's a silo. So is a water, both are added. This is a pump mixed, taken to this tank. And from there it is again mixed and taken down. So this bentonite, what will do, it will fill up the trench and for a period of time, it will keep the excavated face in its original position. It is for a time, for the time being, it's not permanent, but till the time you put the reinforcement and put the time, you put the concrete that will stay, that trench will not collapse. So that is what bentonite is doing. There are many other methods or also there are uh, fumes have come in place of bentonite, but bentonite is one which is being used uh, popularly, so I use this slide. So this is just for you to understand that vertical trenches are taken using bentonite to keep the trenches in the bore pile also uh, people use bentonite to keep the uh, excavation stable. So this is when you do this excavation with this trench cutter, go down all the way to 20 meter, 30 meter. This excavation should not collapse and soil should not fall into the trench. That is the whole idea. And this is another cartoon. Uh, it is done in three bytes, so don't bother too much. So if panel is one, panel is say six meters, it is done in three bytes. One byte, give some space in between, second byte, and this is the third byte. Together it will become three bytes. So the, this is one byte, two byte, three byte. So it will be excavated. After that, the reinforcement cages are lowered, and then concrete is filled. So what you see in the left-hand side is called a guide wall. Before, doing this excavation, this concrete walls will be constructed for about 1.2 meters to guide uh, the uh, reinforcement cage inside so that it doesn't go anyway. So it will also guide the excavation to keep that uh, verticality. So it is called a guide wall. So first you can construct the guide wall, excavate using um, trench cutters and then insert the reinforcement cage for concrete to put it simple. So this is a trench cutter. Uh, so you can see all these cutters, so which will be cutting both soil and heavy rocks. So this is what you see is a guide wall here, concrete guide wall, and uh, the trench cutter is going inside. 
And uh, what you see here is the reinforcement cage. This is a mobile crane taking it and inserting the reinforcement cage into the. This is a panel. So the panels vary from four meter to six meter. So uh, this, what you see in the cement color, is a cover block. Uh, so there should be some cover between the concrete and uh, I mean the earth face and the uh, concrete and the reinforcement. Uh, so the, uh, for diaphragm wall, we use a very generous cover, about in the order of 75 millimeter. Um, but in your, your normal slabs, beams, it will be much less, 40 meter, 25, 40 millimeter, 25 millimeter, like that. So this is the reinforcement cage, which is lower. So this is a close-up shot uh, where the reinforcement cages are lowered. I think this is taken from Chennai Metro Phase One. So here the concrete is poured. As you see, this is use concrete. What is poured is using a tremi method, like bow pile. Concrete is mixed and it is poured by tremi method. So the already there is a trench where we have inserted the reinforcement and um, uh, concrete is poured. Once the concrete hardens, you'll get a wall. So I'll quickly go through an animation uh, to show how, uh, now we talked about one element that is uh, diaphragm wall, but how a whole station is constru constructed uh, this we prepared um, to explain to our client how the Chennai Central Station, uh, in the, the construction methods of the Chennai Central Station uh, in the early days. But later the contract, there was a design and build contract. That means what is design and build means contractor will offer the, his design and it will construct. There were some variations, but this is just a principle. Uh, you can see there's a very wide road of nearly 39.4 meters. Um, but and this station is also very wide station, Chennai Central Station. Many of you might have an opportunity to visit. It is a very wide, big station. But uh, normal, typical stations which I showed you before will not be of this size. But this is just take it as a, an example. So what happens? So for now, the this is the first stage. The road traffic is on either side. Now you move the traffic to one side, and then you put barricades on the right hand side and then this diaphragm wall is inserted. How it is done? Uh, as I, we discussed before, French excavation, bentonite solution, keep the excavation stable, insert reinforcement cage, pour concrete. So, and below rock, the diaphragm wall, it is not possible to cut, so shear pins are used if required. So now, next. So, there is a sheet pile is installed. Why? We see. This sheet pile is not to full depth, only to some depth, according to the design. So it is excavated to some level. There is many slabs coming. This is the top slab or the roof slab. To that level, it is excavated. And then do the excavation. So first you do the roof slab and then put a waterproofing on top of it. And then you do another sheet pile why there is another sheet pile? This sheet pile will be eventually removing. And this uh, roof slab has been taken L bend because the joint should be foolproof and the waterproofing should be, this waterproofing layer should come like this and come like this. So for that reason, you are putting another sheet pile to enable you to remove the sheet pile and then fill and uh, as I said, the sheet pile is removed. And then what happens? So traffic on the left-hand side is now moved to the right-hand side. The barricades on the left-hand side is moved to the right-hand side. And then you insert the diaphragm wall on the right-hand side. And uh, the sheet pile, longer sheet pile. And the excavation up to the roof slab level. And uh, Concreting of the roof slab, the waterproofing on top of the roof slab, the smaller sheet pile, and uh, backfilling, and uh, remove the sheet pile. So now you have constructed two pieces of slab on either side. These are permanent slabs. So these permanent slabs are built and they are also tied up with the diaphragm wall with the couplers in, with, which have been prefixed within the diaphragm wall. Now what happens, so you have done on the left hand side, you have done on the right hand side. Now what you're going to do, the traffic, you are moving into the both sides and your central portion get freed off. And what you're doing, 
So these are some plunge columns or steel columns. I don't want to complicate things. There's some column is coming in between uh, because the span is 40 meters. So you need columns in between. So some columns is constructed. So let's leave it at that point. And you put a steel strut between the two sheet piles. And then what you do? You excavate down because these two sides traffic is going on, right? So then there is a barricade, and you excavate in between. Something similar to that we saw a photo before. So this tree, this is done, and then you cast the roof slab. It looks like a uh, void, but it is actually not a void. See, this is the plan view. Uh, see, this is the marking pit that is shown in the section. What is marking pit? You have to leave some opening for you to carry out the work below and remove the excavation, excavated material and take the construction material like concrete and other things for which you need mark pits as required. So on the side, what you see is the diaphragm wall. So the diaphragm wall has a connections here. They are called male connection and female connection. So everywhere it will be connected like this, uh, jointed. So this will be first this diaphragm wall, this gray color will be done. Next, this gray will be done. And then in between this black color will be done. Uh, so that is how the sequencing uh, will be organized. So this is a plan view. And uh, this diaphragm wall in this particular case is in the, the panel is in the order of six meters. So now we go back to the section. So this, we saw a plan view of this level. Just for you to understand, this is just uh, uh, opening at uh, incidental and then what we do, we go down, go down to the compost level, excavate down. And all this excavated material will be taken up through this uh, openings. And construct the concourse slab, similarly with the opening in the middle. And then what you do, you go down to the next level. This Chennai Central is an interchange station, corridor one and corridor two meets in that station. So there are two slabs. One is coming from Manadi High Court, uh, Chennai Central goes to the Mount Road, uh, Government Estate, uh, uh, Tenampet and other stations. Other one goes to Egmore and Punamali High Road, Anna Nagar and other stations. So there are two tracks. This is the top. Ah. Upper. Any problem? May I continue? Yeah, yeah, you can carry on, sir. Okay. So then you go down, upper track, and then further down, rock level. Before lower down, rock level comes. This is a bit of complication. So rock excavation is difficult. You have to do some small um, amination to break the rock. So excavate the soffit of the base slab. Uh, so this is actual case in Chennai Central because we met with rock. Uh, so they excavated uh, and then blinding concrete. This is a plan view. In the middle, what you see is the excavated area up to the rock level. And this is the diaphragm wall. This is the top of the rock level. This is the bottom of the rock level where you are going to the basement slab. And then remove all the rock and uh, support this with the uh, rock bolts. And again, a plan view. Now coming back, you built the base slab. And because you, this is a diaphragm wall, you cannot construct you could not construct a diaphragm wall because of the solid rock here. So you constructed a wall. So this wall, as you see, is slightly projecting inside. So th to, this is the effective uh, width you'll be getting. So the station has to be widened in the original design itself to suit that. So, and then columns are constructed. And then one more slab, and all these openings are filled up. Whatever opening we have filled it, and uh, temporary strut. So above there, you backfill. You know the temporary strut, and backfill to the top level. So and then remove these temporary sheet piles. Remove the barricades. And now you have got uh, the station below ground and uh, the road is reinstated to its original position and uh, traffic is back. 
So this is a simple representation, but it took nearly three years to complete. So this is a photo of the Chennai Central Station uh, when the construction was going on. This is the Ripon Building, white color building, where the Chennai Corporation is running. And um, at the time, the corporation was doing some repair. This is a heritage building. Uh, so they were doing some repair using lime mortar and all that. So you can see some scaffolding around the dome. And the diaphragm wall was going on on this side. So, but the traffic is going on this side. So this is a construction level photo. And one more photo, this is at the Thirumangalam station. You can see the barricading board with Chennai Metro Rail logo on it. And uh, here you can see reinforcement bars. This is for the top slab, roof slab. So they are building this part on the one side and they will build on the other side and they'll come to the middle. So that is the sequence. So it has to be done piece by piece by piece. Right. That uh, brings an end to the second part of our talk today about the underground stations. So we talked about diaphragm wall. Uh, we talked about design aspects of diaphragm wall, how the diaphragm walls are constructed, how a station is constructed. So now we come to the third and final part of this talk which is board tunneling. Uh, the tunnels by itself is not, a, is not new uh, to the civil engineering industry. But board tunnel has taken a long time to evolve. Tunnels are constructed for many purposes. There are uh, road tunnels, there are rail tunnels, there are service tunnels. Service tunnels in Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, what they do, they construct tunnels and all the services, uh, the water mines, sewer mains, uh, power cables, telephone cables, uh, storm water drains, everything you will take into that uh, service tunnel. So any repair or any work, people can walk into the tunnel and attend to it. So it will not be uh, scattered every time you not dig the road. So this, the wealthy countries, uh, those who can afford to spend money like that are um, putting service tunnels also. And uh, there are a lot of large sewage tunnels. And normally the metro tunnel is in the order of uh, six meter diameter. Um, so these are the different types and the different utilities or uh, usages of tunnels. How they are built, uh, there is something called cut and cover tunnel. Cut and cover tunnel is what we saw in the underground station just now. You Actually it is cut, construct and cover. You cut open the ground, you construct something, a box, and then you cover it. Cut construct cover that is called cut and cover it's simply the word construct is removed in between and it is in the industry it is called as cut and cover tunnel that is one method of tunneling and uh, drill and blast or rock blast tunnels are very popular uh, in indian railways so a lot of hillways uh, they uh, these type of uh, drill and blast tunnels are there the rock that hill will remain and in between they'll uh, blast that uh, rock and uh, treat the inner surface and tunnels will be there but what is the significance or importance of bore tunnel is you bore the tunnel within in a urban area uh, where uh, people are working, where the roads are functioning, where the buildings are undisturbed. Uh, you might have known that uh, the Calcutta Metro is the one very pioneer in India. Actually, it started building metro, underground metro in the year 1972. Even Hong Kong, um, the first metro came to operation in the year 1975, which is considered now one of the best metros in the world. But India started much before. Uh, Srimati Indira Gandhi was the prime minister at the time, and one Mr. Ganikan Chaudhary from the Congress ministry was the railway minister who hails from West Bengal. So that was his first pet project in his own city he constructed. So you can assume all central government support was there for the political support was there for the project, but the project took very long. Why? Because uh, they used this cut and cover method. So the station, we use now cut and cover method. The tunnels, we use bore tunnels. That means between two stations, we use a tunnel boring machine to bore. We don't disturb the road. We don't disturb any structures above. We don't disturb the traffic, but we bore the tunnels. At that time, that was not possible. Even 100 years ago, the London Metro was constructed in 1866, London Metro came to operation uh, and it is called Tube. And in 1900, Paris uh, Metro was opened and uh, New York was 1930 or something. Moscow was in the same time. All these metros 
operate in different forms, not exactly the current sophisticated bow tunnels, but improved, I mean, the older versions of bow tunnels. But in India, that has not come. The world was uh, not very well connected like now. Uh, people were working in their own, uh, their own ideologies and uh, technicalities. So at that time, in 1972, only the cut and cover method was used. So it took nearly 12 years to complete uh, three kilometer and three station stretch. So what happened, uh, the entire country was looking at this and people got fed up. Oh, it takes so long, why should we go for this? So there was uh, not a favorable climate within the country uh, for the metro. All these scenarios changed in the year 2000. In the first year 2002, uh, Delhi Metro opened. It opened only with six stations. Uh, about River uh, Muna, and now Delhi Metro in 2019 is having 230 stations. So you can imagine how fast it has uh, developed. So Delhi Metro, once the, after the success of Delhi Metro, after the success of boat tunneling, after the success of successful wider construction by launching girders, all other cities followed. So Chennai, uh, Mumbai, Calcutta. Hyderabad, Bangalore, and all other secondary cities, which I told before, have all um, gone for metro rail. So the importance of uh, boat tunnels, Chennai is, unlike many other metro cities, is undertaken um, a large part of the construction by tunnels and underground stations. In uh, phase one, it is nearly 50% is underground, and in phase two, it is going to be nearly 40% is underground. So the majority is there. Uh, so I think this will be of very much uh, useful to you if you uh, take care, I mean, if you take uh, metro rail construction as your profession uh, in the coming days. So this is a simple sketch. Um, so the metro rail tunnels are in the order of six meter twin tunnels, two trains, one up and down. So in the order of six meter diameter. Normally it should be one and a half times the diameter below ground, that is nine meter below. So the tunnels can bore when the traffic is flowing on top. So this is called space proofing. Don't bother too much about this uh, sketch. What it shows is there are a lot of services, cables around. Uh, it's about lighting, it's about um, uh, drainage, it is about other services. So there is a uh, track, all these are concrete tracks um, built uh, by different agencies. So as many as 15 different contractors will be working in a metro project at one point of time. One will be building civil, apart from civil construction, uh, they'll be working on mechanical ventilation, air conditioning, tunnel ventilation, signaling, telecommunication, drainage, track work. So civil engineer should have an overall picture of what is going on. Civil engineer will be leading the metro rail construction. Uh, so he should be having a fair idea of all these mechanical, electrical, electronic, these automatic fergates. Uh, you might have seen, you might have used it. Your swipe your ticket, you go inside. It is all highly electronically, digitally advanced system. So that is for that all, civil engineer has to provide facilities, construct the material for that. And uh, this is just a space proofing sketch. So this is a uh, picture of a tunnel boring machine. I don't know if time permits, I have a small video, five minutes video. If there is time, we'll run it, otherwise no problem. Uh, so this is called a closed phase TBM. Uh, there are um, uh, what you call uh, cutters in the front that will be cutting the soil and it, was, it goes more than 100 meter long um, where a, a big factory itself works inside a tunnel boring machine. So it does two things. One is it brings these concrete segments and makes the tunnel. From, from outside it brings the concrete and put the, con the concrete segments, fix it together. That is one operation. Another operation is it excavates uh, the soil and the soil is taken out. Soil taken out, tunnel segments coming in. Two operations are performed. So this is the EPBM. EPBM is a pressure balancing machine. So what you see on the left hand side is the pressure. Pressure comes from the soil. There is active air pressure depending upon the geology of the soil and also the water pressure. So both are forcing there. This is countered by this tunnel bore mission by a chamber where there is a soil is filled and uh, you're giving this pressure and there are pressure cells to measure it. It is nowadays, it is all very advanced, very digitally controlled. 
and um, uh, with that uh, soil uh, pressure water pressure can be monitored and resistance can be given from the other side and what you see uh, in the spiral one is called um, uh, screw drive where that uh, the soil is taken from out and taken back uh, so this is another picture of a cross section of a air pressure balancing machine so this is called the tunnel phase so these are the cutting wheels here which cuts rotates and cuts the soil or rock and uh, this is called the excavation chamber means whatever soil is excavated will be kept here first and then it is through this screw conveyor it is taken to the tray and it will be taken out and uh, these are called uh, bulk this is a bulk head and um, uh, thrust cylinders these are the thrust cylinders so these are the concrete segments so this concrete segment you you can see here this is coming in pieces it will be put put into pieces and made into a circular one and this thrust cylinders will keep them in place and um, seven is the erector so it helps to erect this one erect the one this uh, eight is segment lining this is uh, concrete segment lining and uh, there is a annular grout which is given between the joints so this is taken from a casting yard so these all these segments are cast in a yard outside the uh, uh, action is all precast and uh, the joints here will be put with the rubber cast and tunneling there are many constraints uh, i don't know whether we have time i will uh, i'll quickly run through that uh, so this is a gopun picture in the washroom and pet area so all you see are all small buildings single story two story three story buildings so the tunnels went beneath these buildings uh, between washroom and pet and manadi it has didn't come through the roads but it uh, ran through uh, the area where there were buildings so if, as long as the building is a as a small building up to three stories and it is sitting on a shallow foundation there is no problem uh, the tbm can run below the buildings without disturbing the buildings without making any impact to the buildings so that is the beauty of the machine again uh, for current shanaynagar station between uh, uh, pachepas college and shanaynagar station also the tunnel boring machine has uh, traversed through an area below the buildings if, you, if there is a pile foundation If there is a deep foundation if there is a multi story building with the pile foundation so you definitely the tbm cannot pass us through that but for shallow buildings uh, and for buildings with shallow foundations it can definitely go through and uh, one, another thing is in a residential area we have to take care of the wells more than open wells in chennai city what you found is um, uh, bore holes uh, bore, bore wells uh, and washing and pet area manadi area many people were using the bore wells dug within their houses for uh, their use so all these bore holes were identified before and they were concreted blocked and uh, chennai metropolitan uh, water authority made alternative supply temporarily and once the work is completed permanently for them so these are all other sundry works to be involved that's why i said the civil engineers uh, in the construction area construction industry uh, should have a Uh, overall social sociological pictures so the uh, i worked with lot of um, expatriates foreigners in this project they were all very puzzled to see this uh, bore wells inside the houses because overseas uh, anything below ground uh, is not an individual's property you can buy a land you can build your house but whatever comes below ground whether it is water or a treasure it is a government property so the government is care of supplying water to the individuals residents but you cannot drill a hole or a bore well as you like inside your well inside your house or inside your farm uh, that is not legal so for us it took some time to explain to them it is a common thing in india uh, this is about stack tunnels um, stack tunnels means two layers of tunnel this is again showing the chennai central Uh, as i said there are two tracks one is going for corridor 1 one is going for corridor 2 uh, 
so one from high court to chennai central another from chennai central high court to chennai central chennai central to government state another one starts from chennai central and goes to um uh, goes to more so both the tracks both the tunnels are one above the other the difficult part as you see uh, one the lower one is completely in the rock no problem and the upper one is partly in the soil and partly in the rock this is where the tunnel engineers find it very difficult they should have a cutter heads which cuts the soil and it also cuts the rock it was a very difficult thing but it was all achieved so it also went um, under the kuvam river which is all something you cannot think of a normal tunnel it is all possible only uh, in a uh, in a boat tunnel so what is there kuvam is there so just below that uh this this one is corridor to going tegmore and this one is going to uh, government estate that is um, anasa so this is a photo of a casting yard uh, where the segments are cast this photo is taken i think from vanagram the the contractor who did that uh, uh, washerman pet to uh, government estate had this uh, segment i mean casting yard factory in vanagram in chennai This is photo was taken from there, and uh, this is a batching plant construct. I mean, which inside um, all concrete design mix mix will be designed, and it will all be steam cured. Uh, these are different silos carry the so, uh, cement, sand, and uh, aggregate. Uh, so this is batch plant, and these are all the molds. Uh, these particular molds came from Korea uh, and from China. So these molds, uh, the con the shell thickness is 375 millimeter. So between this mold, other you can also see the reinforcements. So it was concrete. So the completed segments are taken and um, uh, transported. So this is inside a segment. So you can see it's all bits and pieces, six or seven pieces, depending on the design. And uh, people are connecting it. There will be bolts to connect it and. Uh, Uh, anal grouting will be done from out, and uh, gaskets will be there because we have to ensure there is absolutely no leakage. So this is, uh, I think, this is a uh, washerman pet, washerman pet station. Before this is a launching of TBM. TBM has not started functioning. Uh, do you remember that in the green color diagram wall map plan I showed you something as a bulkhead, uh, what you call as a um, shaft? Uh, this is a launching shaft. So the Two TBMs are erected, so this is a launching shaft TBM erection. And the next slide uh, on the right hand side, what you see is it is retrievable. So it goes from one station to another station. It traverses through one kilometer, and when the next station comes, it breaks open and comes in. So it is one. The left hand side is a launching. Right hand side is the uh, arrival or the retrieval of the machine. This is this particular machine is bigger, but normally it is in the six meter. uh high uh, diameter for a boat i mean metro tunnel and in the order of 100 meters long and uh, that brings an end to this today's presentation and uh, i am not sure if the time permits there is a 5 minutes video we can run otherwise uh, we can get into the question uh, answer session uh, yeah i'll share the video sir do you have, do you have time Uh, yeah, no problem. So just five minutes now. No problem. Okay. Sorry if I have. Uh, uh, I think I wanted to finish in one hour, but I uh, have slightly <laughs> overrun. Mm. Yeah, you please run the video. I'll uh, explain. It's running, sir. Can you see it? Uh, so, are you able to see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Are you running the video? Ah uh, yes sir. 
Yeah. So this is um, bigger tunnel boring machine. So it, as you could see, it's 12 meter and in the order of 95 meter long. It is. I think the video is stable. It is not. Well, it's actually running on me. But I could not see. So can you uh, stop uh, presenting option from yours? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I start from the beginning? Yeah, I'll start. Are you able to see the video now? Sir? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. See, uh, everybody could see the video now. Yeah, this is a tunnel boring machine as a, a big industry runs within the machine and um, the road is well on top of it. Uh, so this, the, the second, this is manufactured by a German company called Hericnet. And it is 12 meter diameter and 95 meters long with a bigger tunnel, uh, not like metro tunnel, which is six meters. So as you could see, the tunnel boring machine is rotating. And uh, the red color, what you see is the uh, screw conveyor. So it is excavating the soil, getting into that first, uh, the bulkhead, taking into that uh, highlighted portion. And you see all the screw jacks where these um, uh, segments are, they're kept under pressure. So this is all happening inside. So the segments are assembled and kept inside. And uh, till the time it takes shape, this uh, segment gadgets will be used. So now it is rotating. So depending upon the soil topography, depending on the pressure, so the soil will be, uh, the pressure will be given from inside. And you can see that both soil pressure and uh, water pressure from outside. Soil is excavated. It is taken through the chute, uh, taken to the tray through the screw conveyor. And uh, a particular extent of soil is always kept in that bulkhead to resist uh, the pressure. And you can also see the segments which are coming inside. And you see now that uh, it's through the chute or the tray, the excavated material is going out. So it will be taken to the tail of the tunnel boring machine. And it is all made in pieces. So this type of seven or six pieces will, be, will make one uh, tunnel, this type of segments. So this is approximately 375 or 400 millimeter long uh, thickness. And uh, this is segment yard we saw. And these segments from the uh, tail end, it is traveling inside and coming into the uh, tunnel boring machine and it is taken up and uh, automatically it is it is fed in the right order and uh, it is uh, picking up uh, putting it in the right place and it is rotating and this um, pressure gauges are uh, support, uh, holding it and the screw jacks are keeping it i mean keeping it that in position Till the time it is released, it will be kept in position. So one by one, one by one, one by one, it is made into a uh, circle. So a good um, in a good soil, good one. Normally, ten meters uh, can be progressed in one day. So this is uh, some waterproofing layer on top of it. Uh, so you see, see the concrete uh, segments are fixed. So the, the pressure cylinders are keeping them in position. You can also see the screw, screw conveyor. So this is how one after another, um, the tunnel segments, concrete segments are put, it in, put in position. So that is how it is built. And the tunnel progresses, keeps progressing from one station to another station. So the TBM keeps on moving. And uh, you see a lot of activities within the tunnel boring machine. And people are standing inside. I don't know whether you could see that. And um, the pressure cylinders are putting the uh, segments in the right position. And they're all designed to resist that type of uh, pressure. 
So the tunnel segments keeps moving, EBM keeps moving. The screw conveyor, you can see all the pressure cells also you could see this force what they are indicating in the video is that uh, soil pressure. So you can see two, two guys standing at the top, they're going to change the cutter heads. So the cutter heads after some period of time uh, will get uh, damaged. So you have to keep a close watch on that. It's all made of a very high powerful alloy, tungsten alloy. So the damaged or the less effective cutter head is removed and uh, the new cutter head is taken and uh, put in position and properly bolted. So these cutter heads vary according to the use. So this is how the top TBM works. So friends, I am very happy to spend more than an hour with you. Uh, so it's gone a bit uh, longer than expected. Uh, thank you, sir. There are a few questions in the chat box. Chat box. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, uh, okay. The first question is why certain stretch of uh, Chennai Metro network is of monorail? Uh, uh, same. What is the question? Uh, why certain stretch of Chennai Metro network is of monorail? Actually, uh, no, currently there is no monorail in uh, in Chennai Metro. There was it was planned before. Uh, monorail uh, is uh, not a big mass transit. Actually, the current one, which is in the Arcot Road, which has tended out uh, up to Punamalli Road uh, between Powerhouse and uh, Punamalli, it was originally planned as monorail, but later um, uh, it was not taken for two reasons. Technical reason is. Uh, metro transit is more capable of transporting mass transit and um, uh, metro in, comes under the ministry of urban transport of government of india and metro rail is the state government so every metro rail is owned by the respective state government but it is governed by the uh, urban uh, ministry of urban so the funds available for metro rail is uh, much more and you can get a lot of uh, uh, overseas uh, funding also uh, the phase one was uh, funded by a Japanese bank called JICA. But the monorail comes under the state government. It comes under the trams and all that. It is to be fully funded by the state government. You know, state government uh, funding is limited and it has a lot of commitments in other areas. So financially also funding a monorail is difficult. And a monorail can do some sort of uh, uh, local transport. Just uh, from one place, you uh, from one metro station to another uh, three four kilometers it can locally do some uh, transport but not as a uh, mass transit i think that answers the question uh, yes sir yeah next can i go question. to the next question yeah how safe is it for the workers to work in underground construction any key safety measures and what is the pressure level to be maintained yeah so the safety is a very big uh, area um there is especially people working underground um, and with respect to stations there is one type of safety and with respect to tunnels it is totally another kind of safety so when the tunnel works are in progress normally the visitors are not allowed uh, people who have to go into tunnel has to undergo a safety training they should know what to do what not to do they should separate uh, uh, like uh, this COVID uh, people, uh, the doctors and uh, nurses who are wearing a special jacket and dress for people entering into the tunnel also, there is a special set of dresses. You have to wear all the safety gears and um, there is something called uh, the emergency, how to come out, all that there will be classes conducted. So all safety measures are conducted and uh, it is, uh, the industry is very well oiled. Right? What I mean by oiled is it has matured enough and all the safety measures with respect to um, safety is well taken care. And uh, you might have noted that fatality accidents uh, are very, very less uh, in metro industry and almost uh, nil in uh, tunnel construction. Yeah, I think that asks us. Uh, 
so interested in safety studies there is a lot of scope in uh, metro industry you can specialize civil engineers or mechanical engineers can specialize in safety and uh, there are separate positions uh, within the contractor within the consultant within the client for safety and uh, unless the safety engineer signs uh, authorizes somebody cannot enter into the uh, so people uh, who are having an inclination towards that may pursue a career a diploma or a post graduation in that area there's a lot of scope yeah i think that answers the question <laughs> Yes, sir. next. Are the equipments that are needed for heavy constructions manufactured in India or abroad? Uh, most of the equipments are manufactured in India, but the major equipments with respect to tunnels, it is tunnel boring machine. The TBMs are currently not manufactured in India, even though we are into the industry for more than 20 years. Uh, uh, TB tunnel boring machines are not manufactured in India. Similarly, this um, uh, diaphragm wall grabs or man grabs means cut Oh, uh, taking the soil, the cutter heads I showed, uh, cutting the rock and uh, semi rock, that is also not much manufactured in India. Um, but tunnel boring machine can be refurbished in India. Uh, there are units, all these manufacturers. The major manufacturer is Hericknet from Germany. The second one is Robbins from United States. Uh, there are Kawachi from Japan, and um, there is one um, Chinese manufacturer. So except this Chinese manufacturer, all other people have put their refurbishing units in uh, India. So the repair works or refurbishment can happen in India, but still uh, manufacturers are not happened. But I think it should take place and uh, we should use our uh, human resources uh, to do that. Um, if that happens, the manufacturing of tunnel boring machines also opens up a lot of uh, uh, opportunities in terms of uh, job opportunities and uh, research opportunities for both civil and mechanical engineers. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to the next. yeah. What will happen to the underground structure if the design lifespan is over? Uh, yeah, I didn't talk about that. The lifespan for underground structure. Uh, see, the lifespan of underground structure is normally, uh, not only underground structures, any infrastructure is 120 years. Uh, normally the building, whatever building structures which you are designing now, um, IS 456 and other uh, uh, normal core, national building core, is designed for uh, 50 years. So when you say the design life is 50 years or design life is 120 years, it doesn't mean that the lifespan is completed. So the oldest uh, metro uh, in the world is uh, London Metro, which is called Tube. Uh, it started in uh, 1866 and it is still functioning well. Uh, it is not, uh, I mean, uh, the old metro or at the time the tunnel board emissions were not there. This type of tunnel ventilation has not happened. It is still, um, uh, it's not air conditioned, it is ventilation. Uh, so I, when I traveled to London, uh, it was a summer. The summer means not uh, an Indian summer, it is a European summer. Uh, but uh, they could not tolerate that and uh, metro rail uh, was stopped in the old part of the city uh, for one hour. Uh, that's all. So after that, they resumed. Uh, so our we have to take sufficient care uh, in construction, and no structure has outlived. I mean, we have not crossed that any any metro structure, underground structure, so far, which has uh, become obsolete. So the, I mean, all the modern structures, only after 1960s, most of the cities started uh, building metros. So 120 years is still far away. But whichever city which has already crossed 1900 uh, years which used lesser technology for building, still they are in very good shape. Yeah, I think answers. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful session. Uh, I request uh, Ms. Nancy from third year to propose a vote of thanks. Yeah. 
Hi, uh, it's a great privilege to have been asked to propose vote of thanks. Uh, I would like to express our gratitude uh, towards our coordinator, Ms. Ruby Freyama, for organizing such a wonderful webinar for all of us. Also, thanks to our HOD, Dr. R. Kumuda, ma'am, for her support and guidance in all of these. Uh, on behalf of her college, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering and Department, a big special thanks to our speaker, Ramanathan, sir for sharing this knowledge on valuable thoughts on ground metro rail structure board tunnels and station uh, thank you sir once again for providing deep and clear idea about working principle about tbm and metro excavation with the diaphragm walls its construction elevation with understandable easily understandable slides and pictures and animated videos thank you so much it's really a great pressure in having you with us and thank you once again for your uh, spending your time with us we are expecting more opportunity like this with you and uh, ACOM with our college in the upcoming years also. At last, uh, our true congratulations and thanks to the staff and industrial people for their active participation in this event. Thank you guys once again for making this event successful. Have a great evening and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I can leave now, right? Yes, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.